Richard, today's game, uh, what did you feel about it? Uh, you did have a difficult day yesterday. Actually, before I go to, to that, I don't want to have bad memories, but yesterday you could have easily liquidated the position and made a draw. What made you go for it instead of doing that? Yeah, yesterday was a very, um, well, a very traumatic day for me. You know, I haven't, I think I haven't lost a game before, a classical game, uh, before this, like, for two years, or maybe more than two years. Something like 60 games, you know, and then I have this position um, basically where I think there are like two results. I mean, I can force a draw like pretty much anyhow. I could, um, I didn't have to allow him to take on f6 and enter that, but I, I chose to do that for some strange reason. And after that, I, you know, I could just trade queens in time trouble on b3, for instance, it would be a draw. I could take on g3, it would be a draw. Like, uh, I was looking for chances, and you know, like, uh, t the time was ticking. I have like 30 seconds to move. And then, you know, I wanted to go rook g7, which is a good move. And then I look at the clock, it says like, okay, two something, yeah. And I just uh, forgot that I already held my rook on g7, so I moved it one square behind, it's rook g8. I press the clock, it's one second, I'm like, okay, completely in shock. And then he goes f3, and I was like, I thought that rook c5 is very unpleasant. And he goes f3, and I did the same thing twice. I repeated the same episode, you know, I wanted to take, um, after some, okay, some surprise, yeah, and everything. Rook takes h2, and king takes h2, and then f6. And then I, again, do the same, like, the clock is ticking, and I forgot, and I started with f6, and it's move 40, and I can just resign, basically. Yeah. So I was, uh, you know, pretty upset about that, let's put it this way, yeah. I can imagine. You did bounce back today, though, coming into this game. Frame of mind, uh, you got a great position. Take us through some of the moves. Uh, yeah, you know, of course, uh, yesterday's game played, uh, played an effect on this game, right? Because I was thinking to play um, uh, maybe more ambitious than I, I would normally have, I don't know. So I played g3 first move, which, you know, has no, I don't know, special intentions. And he played this um, 97 line. Yeah, I was expecting actually he'll go g6 and try to get some Greenfield. Uh, I mean, after knight f3, try to get some Greenfield kind of, you know, uh, business on, hoping for me to play d4, and then he'll mm, transpose back to his usual. Um, yeah, and then he went 97, which was a bit of a surprise. And I, I didn't really check this line ever. So I just thought to play some. Uh, some moves. I think there were some games here, but I might be wrong. I, so we, we, we have a uh, Fisher 960, a, a <laughs> Fisher Chess 9, random chess tournament coming up, and we were thinking that you were trying to get a, a leg up on that event. By yeah, it, <laughs> it, it, completely it, got, it got a little bit confusing, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then after Bishop F5? Yeah, I think E6, and then I take, I mean, I took, he took, and I think maybe, like, what would have been possible also that I want to go for bishop g5, right? And I want to get this position, like bishop takes f6, he takes back, I don't know, queen d3, and I want to play in the structure e3, b3, and c4 with having, uh, with, with not allowing him to trade the knight for my bishop, let's say, uh, something like this. And, you know, knight moves, I know, to e2 or c4, and then I play c5, like, this is my plan, basically, yeah? Right. And, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if I could have done this to bishop g5 immediately. I figured I will go queen d3, he will go g6, and then I will go bishop g5. And then he went queen d7, yeah? And it's a little bit changed things. Like, after g6, bishop g5 will be uh, a better version, because, like, bishop b4 is bishop, queen e3 check. So he has to go, like, bishop e7. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's a nice check to give, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then he has to go bishop e7, and then I can do this. I mean, if I wanted to, yeah? Like, take, take, I don't know, castles, something like that. And you get everything that you want, which is e3, b3, knight e2. Uh, C4 and it's play on two yeah, results. Yeah, I feel like this is yeah kind of unpleasant for him. And exactly. then he went queen d7, which is I think uh, you know like I don't know if it works, but it certainly um, made an effect on me. So I played castles. He played bishop before, and I went knight d1, right? And I was thinking, okay, um, I wanted to go for this knight d1 idea actually after bishop before, but I wasn't sure like how to make it work. So I just did it immediately. It might have been you know not that precise. I don't know. Um, here I. I was uh, kind of banging the table for bishop h3, a move uh, that... Yeah, actually didn't... I was considering stuff like that, but after g6, what's your idea? Like, I was thinking to Nothing. play... Nothing, uh, just uh, more or less uh, the same as in the game, okay. but you're, ah, okay. you're still aspiring for e4, but maybe the fact that you've provoked g6... The yeah, I wasn't day. sure because I freed his queen and then he can unpin um, as well. I was actually thinking I want to play after g6, uh, knight e3. And knight ah. takes f5, a f pre move, right? Pretty much. Ah, uh, that would be. As yeah, just positional sacrifice and play for f3, e4. Uh, I was thinking this could be interesting. Actually, I, the main reason I didn't go for this, because after knight takes f5, if he goes king h8, I am still pinned. And I wasn't really sure how to unpin, yeah? So I was like, you know, if 
I can even, uh, you know, he can even lose a tempo. Okay, it's kind of ridiculous, yeah. So, but <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. That is pretty funny. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right. So, in the game, you after night D one. Yeah, you so got I went for this shuffle, shuffling in the back rank. Yeah, queen e six, shuffle g five. Yeah, and, and things get very concrete, right? Because we have this argument that he wants to play, you know, queen c four. He wants to go on the e three square, and I want to play e four. And we are both, you know, it's very time oriented me uh, matter, right? Yes. So I have to go c3, I think it's pretty forced, he retreats, I go rook e1. Yeah, and he took the pawn, of course, it's normal, queen c2 back, e4, and I think this is like where things were critical, I don't know. Um, maybe I was thinking, um, yeah, he played h6, yeah, which is normal. I think also he could play other moves, but h6 is like, I mean, he could play g6 maybe as well, I don't know. I was thinking mm -hmm. it's maybe not completely uh, stupid to play g6 and just to get ready for, you know, I, f I think I cannot take anything right now. Because uh, of the E1. Yeah, and prepare for E5. Yeah, and okay, here I could have retreat. It was also interesting, but I've... Oops, I... Uh, uh, no, my, my bad. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I hit the wrong uh, key. Yeah, this is tricky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, especially when you're up here with this uh, keyboard. Uh, sorry. Uh, so, after H6, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I felt like I could also retreat, but this was very forcing. I mean, the take on F6. Right. Bishop C1, I don't know. Like, I thought he, has, he might have some ideas, like... I couldn't calculate it so much. Like I, f I saw that F E F E, for instance, doesn't work for him. Like F E F E ninety four, uh, ninety four F five doesn't work because of knight F six check. Ah uh, no no no, take here F five for black. Yeah, like something like this. Thing, he cannot just go for stuff like this. But like I don't know. Like I thought okay, this was also very much playable. Okay, but, but in the game you took. Yeah, I took uh, E five F four. I think he played well H five. I mean it's very forcing. I have to do something concrete. G4, and okay, yeah, this was a mistake, he also said after the game, I think he should just uh, hold the structure uh, somehow, right? I was planning to play something like maybe knight h1, uh, like next, but it's, it would be Understand. really complex here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to basically, you know, provoke something, like for instance, c6, uh, I don't know, knight h1, yeah. And wow. if h4, I have some queen f2 stuff going, I don't know. And if he takes, I just play f5, so. Like, something like this was my plan, but of course I could easily lose here as well, so um, it's not, uh, you know. Yeah, after, after this queen d1, I, I, I thought, okay, I'm doing, you know, reasonably well. Yeah, and, you know, I think the attack is just flowing. I mean, I'm, I don't know if I played it, you know, really precisely or not, but um, it's just I have so many attackers and uh, pawns in the center are, you know, doing a really good job. So. Yeah, visually, it just looks uh, yeah, overwhelming. Exactly, yeah. There was just one moment uh, right here that, uh, well, unfortunately... Uh, the engine pointed out a really, really nice variation. Ah, okay, for sure. I'm, I missed something big. Yeah, C, C3 takes D4 rather prosaic, but why didn't you take the bishop? What were you afraid yeah. of? Uh, you're going to tell me soon what I will feel. Ah, knight takes, ah, and the queen takes A6. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> ah, yeah. There goes the house, ah. right? Queen takes A6. Yeah, that's a real pity, actually. It yeah, it's been, very pretty. It would it, have been really cute to play. Yeah, queen yeah takes A6, that would yeah. have been nice. Um, Okay, you yeah. didn't win the brilliancy, but it was a good game. It yeah, was a very good game. Uh, Richard, how do you feel about your tournament uh, now? Uh, you know, okay, 50% is good, especially when the, before the game I was minus one, so you know. Yeah, <laughs> that is, uh, that is certainly nice, but uh, oh, yeah, overall, I'm, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, I'm still under some kind of effect from uh, this unnecessary loss, uh, you know. I, I can't really be happy about this win, but sure, uh, it's nice to win a classical game against such a caliber player. I, I think actually this was our like first uh, game ever against Peter, and okay, I have huge respect for him. So um, yeah, of course I feel uh, you know much better. I'm looking forward to the rest. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, good luck for the rest of the tournament. Uh, Alejandro, uh, Maurice, any questions for Richard? Well. A question that you had earlier, and Thank it you, seems Richard. that it's he's not fully over it, but Richard, we've been wondering, how do you recover from a loss and are able to focus on the next game? And in this one, it seems you haven't actually given up on that loss, that it still bothers you. What's uh, your state of mind in this kind of scenarios? Uh, yeah, you know, I think I'm going to carry that with me for quite some time, uh, especially because, I don't know, I mean, all the circumstances combined. But, uh, you know, I'm, I guess at the end of the day, it comes down to, you know, enjoying playing chess. Yeah? Like, I thought, okay, I have a, I have a wide game. Uh, okay, uh, I am playing a great opponent. Uh, let's, uh, you know, try to give my best and uh, maybe try to have some fun. And, of course, I miss queen takes a6, so I didn't have <laughs> as much fun as I could have. But, you know, uh, it comes down to it, I think. 
Well, thank you, Richard. Thank you.